Reddit, tell me your glitch in the matrix stories. When I was around 20, a few years ago, I kept having dreams about a woman with long black hair named Aurora. They were different dreams but for some reason, her distinct face and name always ended up in them. It got to the point where I would wake up frustrated and confused, trying to google her name or find out how I was connected to her. After a few months she stopped showing up and I dismissed it, thinking my brain was just being a scumbag. Fast forward a few years later, Halloween 2009, I'm in the car with a friend stopped at a gas station. I'm about to pull out and merge onto a highway when I get a phone call from a random number, so I stop the car but no one answered. There was a person behind me who grew impatient, honked at me, and then swerved in front of me instead of waiting for 2 seconds for me to move. Second they get on the highway, some silver civic loses control of their wheel and crashes into the car that swerved in front of me. I called the cops and waited at the gas station for them to come. Turns out the drivers of both cars died. It 100% would have been me if I hadn't of got that phone call. Called it back a few hours later out of gratitude and curiosity. Rang three times and went to voicemail. Hi, you've reached Aurora. Please leave your name and number. Never had goosebumps like that in me life. Called it again the next day, because I was that confused about the whole situation. Some woman answers, we get to talking. I tell her my entire story including the dreams I had. She tells me she doesn't know how I got her number and that she never called me as far as she remembers. Weird, ask her if she has a Facebook to confirm if she is in fact the woman in my dreams. Check her Facebook, holy frick, it's her. If that's not a glitch in the matrix then I'm just bat crap crazy. I think the strangest glitch I've found was back when I was in high school. I was talking to a friend on the phone, describing a dream I had about an ice skating rink, and then he starts to describe the rest of the dream to me from the opposite point of view. It was a while ago so I don't remember everything, but we both described the scenery, what the people were doing, etc. It freaked me out when it happened. The parallel universe answering machine. This happened about 15 years ago. I called my friend up and he wasn't home so I left a message on his answering machine. I said, hey, it's me key, sorry I missed you, call you later, bye, and then I hung up and left the house. I made no other calls. Later that day he called back and he says, wow, that was quite a message you left. Who was that girl you were talking to? I was like, what are you talking about? I wasn't talking to any girl well, as it turns out the message didn't end after I said bye. I had to go over to his house and listen to this message a few times. After my initial message that I did leave, as quoted above, there was a slight pause and it continues on for another 30-40 seconds or so with me talking to some girl. It was my voice, but a conversation I never had with a girl whose voice I didn't recognize. You could compare it to the message I know I did leave and the two voices were indistinguishable. Not just the voice but, you know, talking mannerisms. It was my voice. Also, references to my occupation and activities were the same. Basically, in this conversation I was talking to this girl about going skiing but I had to go down to my shop and work on a car first, which totally correlated to me. Then the message just stopped. It was recorded on one of those digital answering machines that recorded the message to a chip so there was no tape I could have taken and had analyzed. Unfortunately, also, neither I nor my friend had party lines so that's not an explanation. It was very freaky. I can't explain it. TL. DR. I may have connected to an alternate universe through a telephone answering machine. As I was reading this, the lights went out in my room. It's definitely because I barely plugged in my lamp but still freaked me right the frick out. This is a creepy thread man. My dad had this little toy monkey that he used to call his favorite child and tease me and my siblings with it. Not in a bad way, but it was really frustrating to us and we spent hours trying to steal it from him. Well anyways, one day we finally got it and threw it into the garbage after drawing on it and mangling it for a bit. We my dad laughed and searched for it a bit but basically figured we had thrown it out and gave up after a week or so. Anyways, a few years later, when I was about 17, I'm walking down the street in Toronto, I don't live in to- was just visiting friends, 
and see this little orange object on the side of the road. When I walk over to it, I pick it up and see that it was the exact same freaking monkey. It even had the black sharpie lines on it from when we drew all over it. I honestly cannot even come up with the chances of that happening, especially considering our garbage is sent to a local dump and is nowhere near Toronto. It will be back. This happened to me in 3rd grade, and it scared me so much I started crying and had to go to the office to talk to the principal about it. I was in the hallway for misbehaving, and my neighbor Tad, a year younger than me, came walking out of a class to my right, passed in front of me and headed down some stairs. We said hi to each other. About 20 seconds later, he walked out of the same class, passed in front of me, and headed down the stairs. I just stared at him, confused and afraid, and he looked back like why the f are you looking at me like that? I never realized how much it was like Matrix Deja Vu. Second Tad sounds like kind of a willy. You should stick with Tad Prime. At 12 years of age my mom let me stay in the truck as she went grocery shopping. As I wait I see an old guy walking towards the truck with an indescribable look at me as if I know too much. He stops 5 feet from the truck looks at me for a couple seconds and heads back the exact way he came. It was rather traumatic for some reason and very confusing at that age. 5-6 years later my dad was showing me home videos of us at Yellowstone. At Old Faithful I noticed the same guy, same look, same clothes peering at us on camera and at me through the TV. I'm freaked out just telling this. It's you from the future. At a friend's place back in 2008, when we were all teenagers, we had a cool shed at a friend's that we'd hang out in every weekend. It had four sets of bunk beds, tables, a fireplace, TV, fridge etc. The whole lot. One night we were all hanging out and though when I decided I needed a pee, I walked out the front door of the shed and started to walk to the right when I stopped. Now let me explain the layout here. As you walk out of the shed, his house is to the left and to the right is where we all parked our cars. Further out you're left with empty fields and trees. It was dark by now, the lights from the house illuminating the space between the house and our cars, but trailing off just past them. As I took a step to the right, intending to go behind the cars to relieve myself, I saw my friend's older brother standing there. I watched him for a good 5-10 seconds as he stood there, facing into the darkness. He then proceeded to walk behind a couple trees and a car before he disappeared. Confused, I walked back into the shed and asked my friend what his brother was doing by the cars. The conversation went as follows. Me. Hey man. What's your brother doing by the cars? Him. What do you mean? Me. He just walked off behind the cars. Brother. I'm right here. I looked over and there his brother was. Sitting down on one of the chairs with a drink. He was wearing the exact same clothes as I saw him in and the only way to get into the shed was through the door that I was standing in the way of. To this day, I've no idea how it all happened. I'm guessing I was just seeing things, but the fact that I watched him walk around for a good 10 seconds has always puzzled me. I've never had anything else like that happen. Oh man, I have one of these that involves the Matrix. I got my wisdom teeth out in 2000 right around the time that the original Matrix came out on VHS. I was bombed completely out of my mind on Percocet after coming back from the surgery. I had awful wisdom teeth, and my mom basically just dropped me in bed and went and rented the movie for me because I'd never seen it in theaters. I remember being irritated that the sun through the window was making the TV glare but being too out of it to get up. A little bit after the black cat glitch in the Matrix scene. I passed out and apparently slept for about 8 hours. The tape in the VHS machine kept rewinding itself and playing over and over again. I woke up and the movie was at roughly the same spot as when I passed out, but it was completely dark outside. Zero time lapse for me. Completely lost my mind. Started freaking out and screaming because I thought I'd discovered the secret and somebody turned off the sun. I remember crying and trying to explain to my panicked family. Who have never let me live it down. On a semi related note, after her C section, my wife was on Ambien in the hospital. She wasn't entirely asleep and was talking to her mom about how much she hated the doctor that was in the room. She made her mom usher him out of the room. Her mom was a good sport and pretended to make the doctor leave even though he wasn't there. Drugs are a heck of a drug, man. One time I spilled a bowl of SpaghettiOs, and as I was cleaning them, 
I noticed that one was on the ceiling, 9 feet up. I didn't even drop the bowl. I just tipped it over onto the counter by mistake. But sure enough, a single O was right there, stuck to the ceiling. I had a friend in high school, let's call him Bob. Bob was a very nice fellow, and while we weren't that close, we had similar tastes in music and we'd share CDs. This is in the late 80s, way before file sharing. Anyway, we eventually graduated, and I moved several hundred miles away to college, and we lost touch. When I left for college, I had one of Bob's CDs still in my possession, Beat, by King Crimson. Fast forward 10 years, I'd graduated college and was knee deep in my career, and finally saved up enough money and bought my first house, in the new house and while unpacking, I see the CD in a box. Hadn't noticed it in many years, and thought, gee, I really should track down Bob and return this. Right then, the doorbell rings. It's Bob, and he says hey, you wouldn't happen to still have my King Crimson CD would you? I look down, I'm holding it in my hand. I hand it to him, and his mouth drops open. Mine probably already is. We exchange pleasantries. I probably asked him how he found me, but I no longer remember. He eventually takes off. I haven't seen Bob since. I was walking through Best Buy one day a couple years ago and I walked past a rack of books. Sitting on the rack was the last book in the Dark Tower series from Stephen King. The front cover had the picture of Roland in front of the tower with the field of roses behind him. I held the dang book in my hand and looked it over. I remembered being puzzled about why it was in a Best Buy, but whatever. I'd read the first six and had been waiting for the last one but my spending money was low that week. I set it down and decided to come back next week after I got paid to buy it. I went back next week and it wasn't there. It slipped my mind after that for a bit, but about a month later I went to B&N to get my copy. They told me it hadn't come out yet. The release date for the book was 6 months later. I pre-ordered it then. When the book actually came out I went to pick it up. I described the cover out loud to make sure I wasn't crazy. The clerk handed it to me and there it was exactly as I'd held it in Best Buy. This has freaked me out forever. I was a satellite installer and I was driving between two small towns in North Carolina. Statesville and Taylorsville. It's about a 20 minute drive of a perfectly straight two lane road with pretty much nothing but trees on either side. It's the middle of the day and I'm driving along listening to Howard Stern on Sirius when all of a sudden I go from wide awake to falling asleep. Meaning, one second I'm normal, and a second later my head is drooping down and eyes closing and what snaps me out of it is my car bounces like I just hit a speed bump, but I'm still in the middle of the road. Howard Stern is still in the same sentence but my GPS signal says it is lost, and then I hear recalculating and when it comes back I realize I am about 12 miles further down the road than I was, and I had missed my turn by 5 miles. My immediate thought, even though I consider myself a level headed atheist was that I fell asleep, hit a tree and died, and was now in some weird afterlife. It was such a strong feeling that I drove to the nearest gas station. Got out headed inside with a sweaty palms feeling that the cashier inside was not going to be able to see me. To my relief she did, and I bought a Red Bull. I still think I was hypnotized by the road and drove on some weird autopilot for a while, but losing GPS signal, and not missing any of Howard Stern is explainable to me. I even used the serious ability to rewind and there was none of the show that I missed. In case you're wondering my butthole felt fine. I used to work in a building that had three levels of sub-basements, with the piece of lab equipment I typically worked on in the lowest basement. I had the only key, there was a wired phone in there, and I did work late some nights, but not this night. I was sleeping alone in my apartment when I woke up to a call on my cell phone from my girlfriend at 3am. She was in hysterics and asking why I scared her. Apparently she received a call from that basement phone just a minute earlier, with someone who sounded like me slowly repeating her name, until crackling and fading out. My apartment was 10 miles away from work. I thought she was lying, but I saw the 3am call from the basement phone logged on her cell myself. Still freaks me the frick out. Used to work in a building that had three levels of sub-basements, with the piece of lab equipment I typically worked on in the lowest basement, Raccoon City. My friend used to put up a recurring away message, back in the day when everybody had AIM, 
She was a Beatles super fan and put up a sentiment from John and Yoko, Acons for Peace. Well, one day I was walking around my college campus thinking about it, but failing to remember the full quote. In my mind, I kept thinking, something for peace, something for peace. What the heck is that away message? Right then, some chick on a cell phone walks by me and screams out Acons. I realize this is not a super freaky story, but it made my day at the time. It's not every day someone screams out acorns in your vicinity at the exact right time. I hope you enjoyed the glitchy video. You can leave a like or comment and YouTube will show this video to more people. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I post new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Or don't. Either way, have a great day you magnificent people.